let's uh, let's think of the agenda for today so we'll be seeing what is ethereum right and we'll look at how to work on uh, smart contracts and how does how does actually the transactions happen in ethereum right and how else uh, how are the or how are the mighty giants or the companies doing in ethereum right now so and other one is the career and job trends in blockchain so if you are assuming if you want to assume your career in blockchain so how do you think it would look like all right so we're keeping this in mind uh, let's uh, move ahead right so let's know something about ethereum all right so ethereum was uh, conceptualized by our vitalik buterin in november 2013 right he is a pretty much a youngster not even in his 30s he's uh, around 25 years of age so this is not something uh, we are trying to learn invented by someone 100 years ago we are trying to learn uh, something created by someone of our era right so ethereum is a distributed open blockchain network right so it is an open blockchain network so i uh, hope you guys know what a blockchain is right uh, let me give you a brief uh, description of it so if you if you split the word block and chain uh, probably you might be getting some sort of an idea right so it is a blockchain is a collection of blocks right all the blocks are chain uh, which means they are arranged uh, in a serological order so what is there inside the blocks so there is a data inside the blocks what kind of data it might be transaction data or whatever data so there is a data inside the blocks right so all the data is sent into the blocks the data is validated okay after validating it's sent to the blocks and then the block is mined after the block is mined it is sent to the blockchain so that is how a blockchain network works by the way a blockchain is the technology of beyond ethereum right uh, similar to how an email is to uh, how an internet is for the email so blockchain is the same to ethereum right so the key idea proposed was the development of a turing computer language that allows the development of smart contracts for blockchain and decentralized applications so here is something we need to learn about uh, turing complete language right so uh, some some of them might be having an idea of uh, turing machines right so named after the person alan turing uh, take the example of uh, your calculator the day to day calculator you use either might be your citizen or calculator or the calculator you use in your mobile phone All right so if you want to multiply two digit or uh, two, uh, two digit number by another two digit number yes obviously you can get the answer All right in the same in the similar fashion if you want to multiply a five digit number by five digit number another five digit number there's a possibility to get an answer for that also but if you want to multiply uh, a long number maybe a 50 digit number into a 50 digit number so can your calculator do it no right why because it is turing incomplete in the sense uh, there is uh, there might be possible uh, solutions for uh, calling this word turing incomplete uh, because uh, we take the following criteria under the hood we might all uh, we might think there is a less memory we might also think that the program is uh, the program doesn't accept a turing language right so let's not go uh, uh, much 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 deeper into it but uh, i just want to tell you that bitcoin bitcoin is a turing incomplete language right and keeping that drawback in uh, in mind so ethereum uh, invented something called the turing complete language so if you have an idea of of uh, c c++ so you keep iterating the numbers right the count i uh, i++ plus plus, you keep on iterating so what what if it doesn't work so what if i++ plus plus doesn't work after a certain point right so that is called turing incomplete but ethereum uh, can work on the loop in any number of times so that is called so something called turing a complete language ethereum has its own language right uh, the name of that language is solidity okay so the programs uh, the program is uh, written in solidity language for that uh, you need to have uh, some uh, knowledge of uh, javascript and c sharp c c everything everything but 
you need to have an idea of them basic idea of C, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, right? Only then uh, it will be easy for you to uh, learn Solidity even if you don't know them but still you can learn uh, Solidity so Ethereum uses something called Solidity language right so using that Solidity language uh, we work on something called as uh, the smart contracts uh, we'll be looking up at the smart contracts in the below slides right so this is what happens so Ethereum aims to enable innovations in four key areas, right? Currency issuance, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, smart contracts, and smart property. So what we are interested more in today's session is the smart contracts. All right. So if, uh, if you want to talk about uh, currency issuance, so Ethereum has its own currency called Ether, right? All the trade in this platform is done through Ether, right? And there is something else called this uh, DAOs, all right? So DAOs is dead now. Let's better not talk about it today. Uh, and next is the smart properties. Smart properties, uh, with the, by the name only, you can mm, uh, think about it. Smart property is nothing but uh, uh, an example for smart property is a land transfer, all right? So if uh, I'm selling my land to you, I can uh, do it right through the blockchain. So that is smart property. Why it is called smart? Because it is something happening online. It is not happening happening physically, right? Okay. And the important topic which we'll discuss in the coming slides is smart contracts, right? So the name itself uh, says it is a contract. So what is a contract? By the uh, uh, by using the name itself, you might uh, get an idea, right? A contract is nothing but a deal between two persons or two companies. Or whatever it is right again why it is called a smart contract because it is happening something online so in ethereum we will be writing smart contracts okay with the by writing smart contracts uh what we do is we try to create what not right we use smart contracts you take, you know, by using solidity language and we can do what not so what all we can do we'll uh, just see it right so if i want to place a bet with you all right so uh, we discuss uh, i mean i write a, i write a code right how do i write a code in solidity language i write a code okay and we call the code as smart contract okay then we send that uh, smart contract to the blockchain all right so if i'm uh, placing a bet with you right so it will rain on june 21st right if i place a bet with you and the bet is 10 dollars or 20 dollars so I write a code with solidity language, right? And I, I, uh, there is a button, okay, I create. And when I click the button, all right, so my code will go and sit into the, in, in the, uh, my code in the sense smart contract. So whenever I call it a code, it is a, it is a smart contract because we are talking in terms of Ethereum, right? So after writing the smart contract, I click on the button. So when I click on the button, that uh, code will go and sit in the blockchain, right? And it will, uh, when did we write the date as? June 21st. So it will wait for the date uh, to come to June 21st. And when the date comes, right, uh, we, we might include another another smart uh, code there, right? A, a, a code for weather. So it will take all the considerations and it will automatically execute the contract, right? So if I win, it will give $10 to my account. If you win, it will give $10 to your account. Okay, in the code we have to, we can mention even our address also, right? Address in the sense, the wallet address. So here there is no account number, everything is happening to the wallet address, right? You, you need to download your Ethereum wallet. All right, so I'm having my Ethereum wallet and you're having your wallet will have an account number. Your Ethereum wallet will have an, uh, sorry, it's not an account number, it's an address, right? Wallet address and your Ethereum wallet will also have an wallet address right so as the agreement is between both of us all right as the agreement is between both of us uh, both of our account uh, uh, smart uh, addresses wallet addresses shall be mentioned in the contract right so the smart contract will take everything into consideration and it will execute the contract at the time of the need so that is what a smart contract is we'll be learning more about that 
right? So what is the smart contract? The smart contract is the basic building blocks of programs written for Ethereum platform are called smart contracts, right? So we have just discussed about that. So let's understand what are smart contracts. Okay. A smart contract is a computerized transaction protocol that executes the terms of a contract. All right. So when running on the blockchain, a smart contract becomes like a self-operating computer program that automatically executes when specific conditions are met. All right. So in our uh, program, uh, in our smart contract that we just discussed, so what is the condition it is looking into? The date, right? And also what? And also the weather. So that are the specific conditions which are which it is looking into. And when the conditions are met, it will execute the contract automatically. It is a self-operating thing. All right. So Ethereum, we can call Ethereum just not a blockchain, but it it is a supercomputer. Why? Because you can create a contract there, you, and by using uh, Ethereum, you can also create your own coin. All right, so you can also create your own coin. Uh, there are many coins uh, that are uh, you can uh, see this. These are all. There are many coins. Uh, so you, you can just type ERC20 token, and it will give a list of names. Uh, right. So now you have learned uh, uh, two things. So now you have learned uh, two things. What is that? So with Ethereum, you can create a smart contracts. All right. So today there are many betting betting websites. I'm just giving you one small example. So today there are many betting websites, and tomorrow uh, they might uh, use uh, the help of Ethereum blockchain and continue running their site. Right. So what what will the betting websites do? They just uh, write a small smart contracts. Right. So since it is a Turing complete language, the code can be ch keep on changing all the time, right? So there is a bet happening uh, every one one or uh, two mi or two minutes, and if it's a tennis match, uh, there is a bet happening for every set. So all that can be uh, taken care of with the help of Ethereum a smart contract, right? So it is an option contract between parties. It's written as a code into the blockchain. Right, the individuals involved are anonymous, uh, but the contract is written in public ledger. So, what is anonymous? Anonymous is something whose identity is not known, but the contract is pseudonymous. Right? Why? Because it is available in the public ledger. You, you all can see the contract. You don't know who. I mean, you don't know between whom the contracts are happening on, but you can know. What is the code that has been created? Because the code is kept on the public ledger, whereas the rest of the thing is anonymous, right? So, what will happen at the time of uh, the specific conditions are met? So, it, a trigger will be created, right? A triggering event like an expiration rate date and strike price, whatever it is, is hit, and the contract executes itself according to the coded terms, right? So, regulators can oh, we'll skip this one. The, the regulators can use the blockchain to understand the activity in the market. So while maintaining the privacy of individual actors' position, right? So this is this point is again repeated here, right? Anyways, right? So uh, this uh, image is not uh, that clear to you all, but uh, you can take the example that I have given you, right? So there is a contract happening between Alice and Bob, all right? So a smart contract is written. After the smart contract is written, it will wait for the condition after it wait for the condition it automatically executes onto the blockchain right so if you have understood what i told so there is no need for you to go and uh, look into this figure right so transactions okay so the most notable difference between the bitcoin and ethereum blockchain is that ethereum blocks contain both a transaction list and the most recent state of the ledger of this transaction so let's have a Look at the transactions and accounts in Ethereum blockchain. All right, so, so this is how the transactions are happening in Ethereum. The term transaction is used in Ethereum to refer to the signed data package that contains a message to be sent from an externally. So there are two types of accounts 
in ethereum blockchain so one is called the externally owned account which means which is your account and the other is a contractual account which is a, which is a smart contract account right so there are two uh, two transactions one is eoa which you call the externally owned account and another is a contractual account so uh, so what hap what generally happens is okay so if it is a public blockchain so there are different types of blockchains which we are not going into but there are public blockchains and private blockchains so all the information of public blockchains can be found on etherscan.io you know what is a block right so what is there inside a block there are data inside the block right so this is the latest block okay this is the latest block so we are in the 5.5 millionth block which has been mined all right so as i've told there are blocks the blocks have data inside it and the data have to be validated all right after the data is validated the uh, the block has to be mined so there is a specific size for each block okay so once the date once the uh, data uh, once the data is filled in the block the block gets mined right so this this was mined one minute ago this was mined greater than one minute ago so this was this is the latest block so if i refresh all right so we were we see we have seen the 9775th block now it is 9776 block all right so it keeps on so this, this these are the people who have mined the block so this has been mined by f2 pool and this has been mined by mining pool hub okay so I can uh, just show you one online Ethereum wallet, right? It is the um, myetherwallet.com. So since uh, there is no uh, centralized authority like in our day-to-day -day currency, the fiat currency we use, right? So this uh, wallet, all, all, all the transactions that happen in cryptocurrency in, in, in this digital format, must have two keys one is the private keys and one is the public keys all right so the private key is kept a secret you can think it of something like your account num uh, your atm pin or your or your internet banking password right and there is another one called the public key the public key you can call it as your account number so someone okay which can be viewed by everyone so if you want to send uh, money to someone so you, you obviously give him, I mean, if you, uh, if, if someone wants to send a, a, some money to you, obviously you need to give your account number to him. In the same way, uh, your, your public key can be known by everybody. All right. So when you go to a bank and you, when you go to an ATM and withdraw money, or you enter something called your ATM pin, which is kept private. In the same way here also, we'll be, you will be needing one private key. All right. So this is the website. Uh, this is an I'm, I'm just showing you an example of an online wallet okay so this is my etherwallet.com the this is an online wallet for ethereum all right so you just uh, uh, enter some password and cre just uh, create an account then and there itself so you click on create a new wallet all right so you will be getting your keys which are your public key and your private key you need to download them so once you download them and click on this button, I understand and continue. All right, so this is the private key you get. So this key is something like your ATM pin. This must be kept as a secret. All right, so you need to copy this and paste it somewhere as this is your private key. You keep, uh, you save this on two or three or four computers. You can also write it uh, somewhere and uh, save it. Why? Because uh, since we don't have any centralized authority here, since everything is decentralized in terms of cryptocurrency, so if you lose it, there is no chance of getting your private key back. So there's no chance of getting your private key back. All right. So if you lose your ATM pin or uh, if you call the customer care, there is every every possible chance of getting your uh, ATM pin back. But in this case, as this is a decentralized uh, economy, there is no chance of getting your private key back. Uh, if you lose your private key, assume uh, your Ether 
or assume your bitcoins or whatever it is assume them to be lost so you need to store this private key all the time all right so save your address all right so i i click on something called this private key all right and i'm going inside So I have got my so this is this is my address. Alright. <clears throat> this is something like your bank account number. Assume it's something like that. Alright. So this is what you get. You can play uh, you can play uh, with this website. You can create as many accounts as you want. Alright. Transaction is used in Ethereum to refer to signed data package. Alright. So what, what is gonna happen here is so assume there are two persons, A and B. All right, so A is sending some ether to B. Okay, so in order for A to send some ether to B, obviously he needs to know B's wallet address, right? You can call it as your public key, uh, just as, just for the terms of understanding. Assume it to know as the public key. Obviously, right? as we discussed, for A to uh, for A to send some sort of ether to B. Uh, we need to know B's public key, right? <clears throat> and A will use this private key, right? So internet banking password, right? So if you want to transfer someone um, money online, uh, you will be typing your internet banking password and then B's account number, right? In the same way, here what we're doing is, if A is sending Ether to B, A will first enter inside, all right? And then he will type his private key so we have just typed a private key right and we clicked a button called unlock so once we click the button unlock it will proceed to the next page in the next page uh, we have to enter b's public key and the amount of uh, ether we want to send all right and after that when you click the submit button so it will give us something called the signed data package so A's private key and B's public key will give you a signed data package, right? So that contains a message to be sent from one externally owned account to another. What is that message? Message is nothing but the ether you want to send. All right, okay. So A's private key and B's public key will create something called a signed data package, which will send message which will send ether to from from one account to another account on the blockchain right so that uh, data will go and sit onto the blockchain right so this ethereum contains uh, both the transaction list and the most recent state of the ledger of these transactions ether.io right so i can click on a block and i will know the details of this right so for every every block has a height which means it, it will tell us on which block we are and every block has a timestamp right so as we're not going detail into everything uh, so this has been mined seven minutes ago so all the transaction happening in 5509776 block happened seven minutes ago so if i sent a five ether uh, if i'm a and if i sent a five ether to b so that transaction will go into the block and it will get mined after it get gets mined it will come here so all the transactions are hashed all right so that that uh, one transaction is hashed if there is another transaction inside the block that is also hashed if there is third transaction inside the block that is also hashed so in this block there were there are 35 transactions so all together these 35 transactions are also hashed right so the hash of all these 35 transactions is this all right so it also contains the hash of the parent so the most recent state Okay, so how, how it is hashed, so 
Ether, Ethereum uses something called SHA-256 algorithm. It takes the help of uh, SHA-256 algorithm. All right. So if you enter something, there is a hash created for that. Okay. For every uh, node, two hashes are the same. If you want to see, and if I edit one uh, letter, the hash is being changed. All right. So hash plays an important role here, and this also has information. The latest block has also the information of the previous block. The parent hash is nothing but the previous block. Why? Because if you change at one, at least uh, one letter in this, right? What will happen? The hash of the previous block, uh, hash also changes, right? So what is happening here? If I change, if I change, edit one letter, so instead of Santosh, if I write something else, I'm getting a different hash, right? So if I write, so I'm getting a different hash here. All right, so if you change at least one letter, the hash value changes. Similarly, in the way uh, you cannot change anything here, right? So if you change anything, everything in the parent hash also changes. So that is the reason Ethereum or the blockchain concept, it is called as a non-tangible. It is incorruptible ledger, right? So what is there, uh, once again, what is there inside the blocks? Obviously, the transaction happening between different persons, right? So there are also transaction, transactions happening in a bank, right? So where are those maintained? In a ledger, which, which can we see the, the ledger uh, of the bank? No, but can we see the ledger of a cryptocurrency? Yes. So this is all the ledger of that cryptocurrency. You can. Uh, view the transaction of even the first block you just need to go back and back and back all right so this is a digital ledger which is incorruptible so the blockchain is a digital ledger which is incorruptible a blockchain is a technology all right these are all the attributes of a block so Ethereum uses the following flow of how the transaction are stored on blockchain. So we have something called the nonce. All right. So let us see what a nonce is. So each Ethereum account has a field called nonce to keep track of the total number of transactions that accounts has executed. Right. So if I do one transaction, uh, it will the, the nonce uh, will reach it. If I do hundreds of transactions, right. Even then my account uh, the, the the my uh, transactions are being iterated here right so here is where the turing complete language is coming into right so the nonce is incremented each time i make a transaction right for every new transaction and this allows the network to know the order in which the transactions need to be executed right you can just research it uh, by going into the etherscan.io website so there are 154 transactions happening happened in that block so all right so this is uh, one account so these are all the account numbers so who is this a and this is b this is a and this is b so when a has sent some ether to b okay a has sent point point not not one nine one six ether to b all right and what will happen this private key and this public key will create a hash this is that is what we spoke about right so we have 154 hash values so all these 154 hashes together uh, gives you this hash so all those 154 are, are kept in the SHA-256 and they are hashed okay so that is how uh, the transactions are happening so if I go inside the transaction so this is one address one random address I'm picking up all right so this uh, has he has done uh, three transactions okay so number of transactions are three so this is taken care by the nonce all right so uh, when you send uh, in a day-to-day -day life uh, so when you send 
uh, you might be having a knowledge of NEFT transfer or IMPS transfer or RTGS transfer. So when, when you send uh, money from one account to another account, the bank will charge you something called the transaction fee. All right. In the same case, Ethereum will charge you something called gas. Right. So uh, when I, I want to send Ether from my account to your account, okay, some, uh, there's something called the gas that will be detected. Okay. So why why they use the word gas? Why because uh, uh, when you when you pop uh, petrol or uh, the uh, gas in your car, so it is consuming, right? It is consumed. Gas is something consumable. So whenever you want to make a transaction, uh, you need to pay something called gas, right? So the price per unit of gas you are willing to pay for this, and you can create. Uh, I mean, uh, you can give your own uh, fee, whatever you are willing to. But the more fee you pay, uh, the more chances are for uh, your transaction will be uh, validated fastly. So your transaction will be completed fastly. Uh, but why? Because there are, there are people called miners or validators who are validating your transaction. So the, these fees will go to the validators. Obviously, the validators will pick up those uh, transactions. Uh, which have high fee value. Why? Because the fee will go to the validator. So that is the reason uh, the higher your fee, the faster is your transaction. So there's a gas limit. So maximum gas you're willing to pay for this transaction. All right. So and there is the address, two address, who do you want to send it to and the total ether you want to send it to. So these are all the attributes, some of the attributes you need to fill. Obviously, there is, uh, uh, there is uh, no option called nonce there, but there are options called gas price, gas limit, right? If you go into the My Ether wallet and uh, when you generate a private key and go inside, you will be finding all this, all right? So uh, I'll ask you to just uh, create, a, create a wallet and play with that, right? So you can create as many wallets you want. So this is an important concept if you want to know. So what is uh, the business in the age of Ethereum, right? All right, so uh, let's get into this. Uh, business in the age of Ethereum. All right, so where is Ethereum standing up? Guys, uh, frankly speaking, uh, the world is uh, just uh, trying to change into the world of blockchain. There are many companies, uh, the major players, if you ask me, uh, they are, uh, there is Microsoft and there is also JP Morgan for trying to adopt adopt uh, Ethereum blockchain uh, for their source. Oh, so you might be knowing uh, JP Morgan. All right. So JP Morgan is is a, a financial guy, right? He's also a venture capitalist and every, every, whatever you call it. So with, with this uh, with this Ethereum uh, blockchain, you can also create uh, create your own crowdfunding. Okay, how? The, uh, you can write a smart contract. You can send that smart contract to the blockchain. All right. Uh, and you can ask for funding there. Uh, I'll show you. Next. People having idea of a share market. Okay, you know what is ICO? Sorry, you might be knowing what is IPO. It is an initial public offering. So whenever a, com uh, uh, whenever, uh, a company uh, wants to go into the market, and create a share value. They create something called an IPO. In a similar fashion, for Ethereum, uh, there is something called an ICO, which is called Initial Coin Offering, right? So uh, there is something called ICO Bazaar. Okay, so there, there are these coins. All right, so. There's something called UB coin market. There's something called Gamblica. So all these coins want to go into an ICO, which means, uh, suppose take the example of market space. So market space has gone to Ethereum blockchain. Okay. So what did they do? They have written a smart contract. They have written a solidity code. Okay. And they have sent that solidity code to the Ethereum smart contract. Sorry, they have sent a smart contract to the blockchain. So what is the blockchain doing? 
so suppose they have written a code all right so we want to pull ten thousand dollars or we want to uh, we want to pull twenty thousand uh, to our funding right so they will mention the amount whatever is the amount in the smart contract all right so the block the smart contract will go into the blockchain all right so what is the condition here twenty thousand is to be collected in in one month all right so those are the conditions and the time as the time is 30 30 days so the smart contract will wait for the time to take uh, the 30 days after 30 days it will see if 20,000 is really connect, uh, collected if 20,000 is collected all that uh, ether will go into this market dot spaces address if 20,000 is not collected all that money all that sorry all that ether will go back to go back to the investors account right so is a smart contract not a great thing so without the help of a human just by writing a Turing complete code in, in solidity language all this is happening all right so all this is happening with the help of uh, the ethereum blockchain so that is the reason ethereum is no more a blockchain it, ethereum is a, we can call ethereum as a supercomputer right so in the same way there are many companies who want to use uh, ethereum as their source all right smart contracts everybody can write smart contracts uh, if you take the example of an inventory management company right so what is the investment in inventory management company doing so there are many people many uh, attributes involving the manufacturer uh, the distributor the wholesale the retailer the wholesaler and all these people right right so this these uh, guys can uh, write a smart contract for themselves and create what not right so if i'm uh, uh, also assume uh, me to be a company so what will my company be having so i might be a manufacturer right if i'm a manufacturer i'll be buying goods from someone okay and I, so for that i need to maintain accounts right so if i'm maintaining accounts i must be having a ledger right so if i'm maintaining a ledger through bookkeeping so this is what the ethereum is also doing that right? it is maintaining a dig, uh, di, uh, it is maintaining the digital ledger right all the transactions happening on whatever it is so the blockchain is maintaining a digital ledger right so can cannot the companies uh, turn turn into blockchain so which means all the things the company is maintaining through bookkeeping can't it be digitized right why because because uh, as we have seen it, this uh, isn't a <coughs> excuse me so is this not a, a incorruptible ledger also as we spoke about because everything will be hashed okay so even if i want to uh, even if i uh, i can uh, store my birth certificate on blockchain how i will take my birth certificate right and i will uh, convert it to sh256 which will give me a hash and that will that hash will go onto the blockchain and uh, saved on the on blockchain platform right so whenever i want to uh, view it in the future can't i view it so isn't a blockchain a good concept and by Ethereum uh, creating a smart contract, creating a, a coin on its own and other people outsiders coming and creating a coin on Ethereum, their own coin. So if I, if I have a good idea and I want to go into the blockchain, so there is no need for me to go create another blockchain platform, right? So I can go onto the Ethereum blockchain platform and create my own coin, right? So those coins are called ERC20 coins. So it, guys ethereum in the future is gonna be a king it is not even a king maker so uh, okay but in terms of price it might not have uh, overtaken bitcoin uh, but in the terms of technology obviously if you have an idea of it you might be knowing bitcoin has already uh, overpassed uh, ethereum has already overpassed bitcoin right so this will be a supercomputer in the future right so why because i'll give you a small example so they, these guys have created one language called solidity okay so that solidity language created so many wonders that now they are creating another language called serpent why they are creating another language because they're getting it they get getting the ethereum blockchain modified why are they getting it modified why because it is it is becoming famous 
for that reason itself. So there is one language, Solity, and other new language is coming for Ethereum, which is called Serpent. All right. So that is uh, the present trend. And 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 frankly speaking, it will take another two to three years for uh, all the companies to get involved into Ethereum blockchain. People are just trying to know about it. Now is the uh, right time to enter it. Uh, if you want to enter into this language uh, for career change uh, now is the right time for, to change the career I mean uh, if you already have a 10 to 15 years experience uh, in Java C sharp uh, we'll be looking at that however uh, if you have uh, this uh, uh, knowledge on uh, C sharp Python and everything so you are already good to go and apply for blockchain uh, jobs all over the world so Israel uh, is a master right now I uh, don't know how, where it came from but Israel is a leading uh, blockchain uh, in creating jobs and later on now uh, there are many jobs created in Dubai so Dubai uh, is creating its own coin EMI coin in the same way about India is also creating its own coin Lakshmi coin uh, Reliance uh, Geo is starting their own coin Geo coin so this will take time, but the movement has begun. This movement is something which will not stop. All right. So there's something. So how is my future in blockchain? Right. So uh, uh, till a recent point, there were no non-technical jobs. Uh, people, uh, we had only technical jobs, but uh, uh, the uh, Salesforce and SAP got integrated to blockchain uh, recently. Right. So if you are if you are already in SAP guy non-technical guy uh, what is your job you go to companies and give solutions right and then your technical team comes and right so if I'm working on a bakery so how how do I uh, jump into SAP so if I'm a bakery I'll take the help of an SAP uh, guy right so how will uh, SAP help me in going uh, and managing my bakery products and later on someone from the technical team will come so in the same way uh, you, you, you also have non-technical jobs for blockchain so what is your role you go to companies and ask the companies and get them digitized digitized in the sense so all the uh, bookkeeping ledgers will go onto the blockchain so you will digitalize those companies so you will go and give them solutions right for this uh, you, you need to be reading a lot of books so even uh, governments can take the help of uh, blockchain how if you can, uh, uh, so all the as I've told you, all the birth certificates and death certificates can be maintained on blockchain, right? All the uh, IDs and whatever it is, everything, everything can be maintained on blockchain, right? It is tampered proof, so no duplicates can be created. Why it is incorruptible? Why it is incorruptible? As I told you, so everything is hashed, and we cannot change the hash value. If if you change the hash value in a per, in a particular block the hash value of the previous block of uh, the changes so if the hash value of previous block changes the hash value of the before previous block also changes so it is so in, in that sense it is a non corruptible ledger right so in the uh, and also there are technical jobs right for non technical you need to only read a lot of books and give solutions and for uh, certain non technical jobs includes a business development manager right so helping clients migrate to blockchain as i have told you uh, your skills include good verbal communication all right so verbal communication is obviously uh, necessary in, for any job have a sound knowledge on blockchain yes we, why because uh, you need to suggest to companies what type of uh, blockchain he has to maintain depending upon the size of the company whether it is a private blockchain it is a public blockchain so if I'm a manufacturer so there is no need for me to go to public blockchain so if I'm an IPO holder so some, someone like Reliance and uh, other big companies like Tata and all, so they need to go on public language, sorry, public blockchain. Why? Because uh, there are many investors for the company. So you need to know everything about the blockchain, right? So having additional knowledge on finance, healthcare, government policies is an advantage. So if you know the government policies, you can give good solutions of blockchain to them, right? So how how does your so if if there is a government policy uh, which can go to the blockchain, obviously you can approach the government, right? So on the present healthcare. Uh, can easily uh, take the help of blockchain right how uh, they can uh, store the name of the patient doctor and everybody so if I come even after five years 
All right. So uh, with the help of my timestamp and with the help of my block block number, I can know uh, or or the doctor can know what he had served the patient. Right. So if I am admitted someday and I am uh, uh, going out of the hospital, uh, if I am getting discharged today, right. So on the timesheet, I will be timestamped, right. And uh, my details will be hashed. Later on, even even if I come after five years, depending on the on the block number or time step, uh, the doctor can view my data and the doctor can uh, treat me uh, from where he stopped five years ago, right? In finance, finance there are many sectors, so there are many frauds happening in finance sector. As I've told you, famous uh, uh, diamond merchant, right, who has looted banks for eleven thousand crore Indian rupees. Okay, so why that, did that happen? Because of not proper software maintenance of uh, the bank. All right. So if we, if the if the uh, banks go to blockchain, so what will happen? Everything, all the data will go into the blockchain. So actually, what happened was I'll I'll just give you a one minute uh, gist of this. So that a guy approached one bank. The uh, bank had given something called LC, which is letter of credit. Using that letter of credit, he has approached some other international bank. All right. So that international bank so what did it do it has released uh, money to money to this uh, merchant the diamond merchant all right so what what does that lc mean even if this person uh, if, if this person uh, doesn't pay the money on time the bank in india will pay the bank abroad so that is uh, what the letter of credit does so what happened after one month uh, hit the bank didn't pay the amount to him right so what happened actually was uh, this merchant had actually tied up with someone from the bank all right so and created fraud papers so that will not happen uh, in the case of blockchains why because every everyone in the case of blockchain what will happen so that letter of credit will be hashed and that hash value will be sent to the blockchain right that uh, later on the international uh, bank will uh, look after that hash value sent by this indian indian bank right so with the help of that hash value all the matter inside that hash value will appear and depending upon that the bank will release uh, the amount if it is fraud it will not release right and coming back to the technical aspect so you can become an a blockchain architect you for becoming an uh, blockchain architect obviously you need to have knowledge on all these languages C sharp C Python Java JavaScript solidity all right so this is not the minimum minimum is already around 1.4 to 1.5 US dollars and the demand for them is very very huge So, right. So, so these are the skills involved for uh, you to learn solidity. Obviously, you need to be having an added information or pre experience on Java or Java, Java, not even Java, but you need to learn a JavaScript at least. So, Java can be taken care of later on. Uh, all the Bitcoin coding is done on Python and C sharp. All right. So, if you are already aware of Python and C sharp and uh, you're already uh, good to go and apply for Bitcoin jobs and in the case of Ethereum uh, you need to be learning Solidity. All right. it, Solidity is not at all a difficult language it's a very very easy language if you have a prior experience of JavaScript because it, this is a new language and people are already in those jobs so if they have achieved jobs why not we? So what we have uh, is a very structured training program on blockchain so as you can see on onto my screen uh, we have this training in the form of an online instructor led training of 30 hours in total and this would be covered with a with a live instructor how we had a session today obviously it would be interactive session with wherein you can go ahead clarify your doubts ask questions with the instructor i have the class starting on from this saturday so it would be Saturday, Sunday from 8 p.m. 
Indian Standard Time with the instructor and it would be a three hours of session every Saturday Sunday and it would go on for five weekends so during the course of the session you have any questions any queries any doubts uh, similarly we'll have the instructor is going to go ahead and answer all your questions doubts and queries either via chat or or through uh, the voice option and at the same point in time well, you'll get a 24 7 support as well wherein if you have any questions queries during the weekdays you can clarify your doubts from the instructor uh, or you can you know there would be someone from my support team who's going to go ahead and answer your questions or queries via email and the best part is that once you're enrolled with the IntelliPath program, you can come back and take up the classes in future as well because we give you a lifetime free upgradation. So if at all there is any sort of, uh, you know, new technology or any sort of an upgradation comes in in blockchain, you have the accessibility to come back to our website or to reach out to my technical team and you can take up the classes as many number of times as you want. And if you go ahead and sign up for the online classroom, uh, you can see there is a self-paced training that we offer in. You'll get that self-paced training absolutely free of cost. That would have all the recorded sessions, all your hands-on exercises, project work, and the PDF downloads. It would be given to you absolutely free for your self-learning objectives. And people coming in from, from the other regions as well, like from US, Canada, uh, the classes is going to be same Saturday, Sundays. It's going to be from 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is going to be, again, a three hours of session. So, uh, you know, depending upon your time zones, obviously, it would be feasible for learners from, from the other regions as well to go ahead and take up the live class. So, you'll have a lifetime access, lifetime support, lifetime free upgrades provided. And as a month-end campaign, you can see we have gone ahead and reduced the price from 19,494 to 15,048. And as a this month's month-end special, if you go ahead and sign up, you'll also get a further 10% discount on that 15,048 Indian rupees with the self-paced training given to you free of cost. For people coming in from from the other regions, apart you know outside India, you can see the price you know, reduced from 342 to 264. And if you go ahead and sign up before this month end, you get a 10% discount on that 264 with the self-paced worth 211 given to you free of cost. And at the same point in time, you can select your date and you can let us know which which particular schedule works for you because we go ahead and we start class every every Saturday by default. All right, guys, so thank you so much for your time and uh, for going ahead and, you know, enrolling for the program. What you can do is you can just come on to our website. Uh, you can certainly have a look at our curriculum under our course content section. You can go through the curriculum. If you have any further doubts, questions, queries, you can come on to our live chat and you can drop in your information and someone from my tech. Uh, training and coordination team can touch base with you and give you mo more information and can clarify your doubts accordingly. So guys, thank you for your time and looking forward to have you on board uh, soon. So thank you. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.